Our subject in this video is resources in greet.net, which can be edited in the data editors pane. In greet, resources are all the energy sources and materials transformed, transported, or otherwise used in stationary and transportation processes. Resources can be a natural resource or an energy source. They can also be processed materials, fluids, gases, or other energy types. We'll look at the features of the resource editor, and then we'll add two new resources that we can use in a process. In the Data Editors pane, Resources is the first option in the menu. As an example, we'll open Crude Oil by clicking on Resources, selecting Modify a Resource, and locating Crude Oil in the pop-up menu. We see three frames in the Resource Editor. The resource parameters are contained in the left frame, and at the right we can see the Membership frame, and below that is the Compatible Resources frame. Let's first review the resource parameters. There's a drop-down menu to specify the state of the resource, with the options of energy, gaseous, liquid, or solid. Then there are fields for the name of the resource, any alternative names, its density, the lower heating value, or LHV, the higher heating value, or HHV, the sulfur ratio, the carbon ratio, and market value, and as usual, there's a place to attach notes. LHV and density are used for converting quantities between inputs and outputs of different processes. Defining these parameters allows a user to define input and output flows in quantities of energy or mass, and then the software will automatically perform the conversions while calculating. The carbon and sulfur ratios are used to calculate emission factors when a technology uses the balance option. I'll explain more about technologies in a separate video, but defining carbon and sulfur ratios in the resource editor enables the user to choose to automatically balance emission factors for CO2 and SOx, and GREET will calculate the mass fraction of carbon and sulfur in the resource, then calculate emission factors based on the quantity of carbon and sulfur emitted in the other emission factors defined for that technology. A resource can be designated as a primary resource or natural resource by checking this box. In GREET, primary resources are generally taken directly from nature. They can be extracted from a well, like crude oil, or they can be captured energy from our environment, like solar or wind power. Then they're used by a process as an input without upstream emissions or energy use. If we try to uncheck the box for crude oil, we get a message saying that the process called conventional crude recovery uses crude oil that originates at a well, so we can't go ahead with that change because it would disrupt that process. Near the bottom of the parameters frame are two links. The one at the left, Edit Pathway Mixes, opens a window where we can jump to a pathway mix where the resource is used. The link at the right, Edit Evaporation Properties, allows us to list gases that might be emitted by the resource as a loss. Looking toward the left, we see the membership frame, which is only available if the resource is a primary resource. Listed in the membership frame are a number of groups which correspond to the groups you see in the well-to-pump results for a pathway. A resource can be placed in multiple groups. The Compatible Resources frame is for listing resources that can be mixed with the edited resource in a pathway mix. For crude oil, we see that bituminous oil is listed as a compatible resource, so it could be included in a mix with crude. Another example is ethanol, where ethanol and gasoline are listed as compatible resources to allow blending for E10 and E85 blends. I'll now add a couple new resources as a demonstration. First, I'll add helium gas. 
The alternative names field is for abbreviations or common names, and they might be used in searching for the resource. So I'll list the atomic symbol for helium. More than one alternative name can be entered. Just separate the names with commas. The density of helium is 0.178 kilograms per cubic meter, so I'll change the units in the density field by right-clicking and selecting Change Unit. Then I'll fill in that value. Always make sure that units are correct for the values that you enter. I'll also add an image by clicking on the icon in the upper right of the frame and selecting an image that resembles a gas. If I click on Edit Pathway Mixes, a pop-up message says I have to create a pathway that produces this resource before I would be able to edit a pathway mix. So that option isn't yet available. I'll go ahead and add helium as a new resource. Then recalculate. And now when I open a blank stationary process, I can search in resources. And there's helium. Now I'll add a new resource called Tidal Power. The state of this resource would be energy. And when energy is selected, you can see some parameters, like density or LHV, are shaded out. And if I click on density, a message appears saying a value cannot be added since the resource state is energy. Resources categorized as energy would be power or electricity, resources which don't have any physical properties, and therefore don't possess these shaded parameters. I'll add a few compatible resources in case I want to make a renewable electricity mix. Then I'll add as new. That's about it for resources. Just a reminder that you can subscribe to the Greet Model tutorial channel to keep current with our latest videos. Thanks for watching.